about a dozen people on the call right now. Um, in case anyone doesn't know, I'm John Anderson. I'm Public Works Director for the Village River Forest. I have uh, Jeff Loster on the line as well. He's the village engineer. And we're just going to go through the um, presentation I have here. We're, we're going to have a stormwater master plan, an RFP, a request for proposals put out soon. But we before we do that, we wanted to meet with residents to get any feedback on uh, what we could include in that document. So that's why we're having these meetings uh, before that document gets posted. Um, so now I will just start the presentation and I'll share my screen here. If I can remember how to do that, just bear with me. Here we go. Okay. Can everyone see that? Yep, okay. And let me start the slideshow here. There we go. All right, so the agenda for tonight, we're just going to review the existing uh, river forest sewer system, uh, go over the items recommended to be included in the stormwater master plan, request for proposals document, the uh, engineering firm selection criteria, the timeline, and any uh, feedback and questions that you have. So just as an overview, the uh, river forest sewer system we do regular maintenance on it. We do sewer cleaning, televising, and lining on a regular basis. Uh, the sewer system consists of over 33 miles of combined sanitary and relief sewers. The vast majority of the system discharges into the MWRD, the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District system. There's also over three miles of storm sewer located on the north side of the village, which drains into the Des Plaines River. The Public Works Department uh, cleans and televises the sewers on a regular basis, uh, which ensures that each area gets cleaned and televised every five years. And sewer lining is performed on a regular basis to any sewers that are identified through the televising to be in poor condition. And we do that annually as well. So the purpose of a stormwater master plan um, we're going to be seeking qualified engineering consultants to create this plan. Um, and before we do that, we're just seeking resident input on the scope of services for this. And the typical process for a stormwater master plan would involve meetings and data collection. So there'll be a kickoff meeting, monthly progress meetings, a review of any available village provided data, field investigations, topographic survey. Um, this would be incorporated into the GIS system. There's going to be public outreach throughout this to solicit feedback regarding any flooding concerns as well as any uh, conceptual level projects once it's established. And these are anticipated to be open house style meetings. And then there'll be a village board presentation of the final master plan. So this would, the scope of services would involve sewer modeling, flow monitor, monitoring as well. Um, the, the engineer would develop a hydraulic and hydrologic model of the sewer network. And it would include all piping and other areas uh, specifically identified by staff and all modeling and methodology and results would be included in a report through a narrative figures and maps as necessary monitoring of flow and uh, data collection will be done as necessary for the modeling effort and uh, all flow modeling and results will be included in a report through narrative figures and maps. And another portion of the scope of services would involve calibration and uh, system evaluation. So the engineer would determine the overall level of protection provided by the existing network of sewers as applied to current rainfall data, they would calibrate the model for dry and wet weather conditions. They would describe the runoff volume model, runoff routing models, and calibration standards to be utilized. 
They would evaluate the sewer network and overland flow based on the current rainfall data for two year, five year, 10 year, 50 year, and 100 year rainfall events. They'd recommend design standards and criteria for future stormwater improvement projects. There'd be analysis of overland river flooding, its impacts, and any potential solutions. They'd recommend um, stormwater ordinance modifications, detention, volume control, release rate based on system evaluation and community needs and preferences. There'd be an analysis of the current overhead sewer backflow prevention program. That's the subsidy program that we currently have. There'd be an analysis of the interaction between the village and the MWRD sewer networks, including the frequency and conditions under which the village is impacted by the MWRD reaching sewer capacity. And when the master plan is complete, they would be able to recommend any capital improvement plan projects. So there'd be a conceptual level development of CIP projects, village wide to mitigate issues identified by the evaluation. There'd be an analysis of existing green infrastructure and benefits in addition to opportunities for new green infrastructure. They review resources available within the village staff to determine the potential need for staffing assistance as it relates to the findings of the master plan. Probable costs for all CIP projects will be included, including operation and maintenance costs. And they provide analysis of benefits associated with all CIP projects, including resulting levels of protection. So the selection criteria for the engineer once the proposals come in would be analyzed based on their approach to organizing and understanding of the project, the responsiveness to the requirements, terms and timelines and conditions for performance, their familiarity with village policies and preferences, as well as any other applicable requirements and um, their familiarity with the uh, governing bodies listed there their capability and experience on related projects similar in scope and scale, their project team qualifications and experience, their recognition of items related to the project, including identification of elements and processes that will result in high quality deliverable, and of course their proposed fees. So the timeline for this uh, would be to put it out for advertisement and uh, that would be the selection and approval um, at that point would be a two to three month process with board approval anticipated early next year. And uh, once the RFP submissions have been evaluated and a selection is made and approved by the board, the amount of time for an engineering firm to complete a master plan is approximately 12 months. So at this time, uh, we're just looking for any questions you have or feedback about this uh, before we go back to the board and um, get, have them give us the go ahead to get the RFP uh, advertised. So if there's any questions, uh, Jeff and I can take them now. How does this, this is Greg Gallo and I used to live up on the north side. How yeah. does this integrate in with what the Burke guys did when they did the north side sewer project and phased it, <clears throat> whatever, phase one, phase two, phase three, and we only completed phase one at that point. And there were still other phases that they were gonna do depending on how it worked and how much money they wanted to spend. And, and I thought they had some sort of plan already in place. And were you guys around for that? I was around for the uh, implementation of that. And so that had to do with getting the stormwater in the north side to the Des Plaines River, as you're referencing. Yeah. Uh, phase two. So phase one was completed and phase two has been designed. Um, and that is a project that can be analyzed through this stormwater master plan. But the reason this is different is it's looking at um, all aspects throughout the village. Um, they would look into that as well and determine if that's something that's needed. And then they would prioritize that. They would say, okay, maybe maybe they would come up with, um, with a recommendation that says the continuation of that project is needed. And here's where it lies as a priority um, as opposed to other needs possibly in other areas of the village. And then we would take a recommendation at that point. Um, I don't know, Jeff, if you wanna to speak to that a little further. 
Yeah, certainly. Um, so, yeah, to your point, we've, we've got phase one in the ground and uh, we even split out a called something of phase zero across Thatcher Avenue and did that work too. Um, so everything but phase two is done, is in the ground. Um, as John pointed out, this project, this master plan would certainly take that into account because now that's in existing condition, right? We've got those pipes in the ground to help deal with uh, heavy rain events. Um, but since that model has been, since Burke did that model and, and, and took a look at that specific area in town, um, which is certainly something we would share with the consultant that comes on board for this work. Uh, since that's perf been performed, uh, you know, there have even been updates to rainfall data that are used for these studies. So while that work was done and was great and seems to, that phase one work seems to have made a huge difference up there. And we haven't seen a lot of, for lack of a better term, need for phase two as of right now. Again, to John's point, this project would take that into account, would analyze that, would give us a little more insight as to whether or not a phase two is needed on a, a kind of a modeling basis, um, but would also be able to look at that within the context of updated uh, rainfall data, which is something that just came out within the last year or so, uh, which which this project would take into account and that previous Burke model did not. Got it. Okay. Understand. I'm Agatha Gallo. I live at 348 Forest right below the railroad tracks. And um, I have a few questions. Um, you know, I live here, we've lived here over 36 years, and we've only had water now in our basement for the last five or six years. So something is different. Could be climate change and more water, like you said, Jeff. Uh, it could be, I don't know what it is, but um, how, uh, how uh, is the railroad going to be looked at? Because the railroad does, uh, at the 300 block, does... Um, I guess you could say divide from the north and the, and the south. I know we're all part of a floodplain and I know we're all built on a marsh. And so, you know, I know that <clears throat> water in the basement can't occur. So I was wondering how they're gonna, number one, uh, look at the sewage system where the railroad crosses and are they connected or not, number one. And, you know, <clears throat> how does the railroad make a difference and I don't even know if that's even a question you know what I'm because the railroad does you know cross uh at, at right up between the three and four hundred block I'm just amazed on how you know we've spent over ten thousand dollars putting in a valve um you know for sewage backup do you know as I walk around the village I notice a lot of people have done that now those little white little I don't know what they're called, but you know, the little plugs sitting in the front yard. Okay. So I've noticed even after, I mean, the only time that this, we had that put in the fall and I think we had a major rain over two or three days in May or June. I don't remember. We had some more water. I mean, we put in a plug, we put in new drains. We've had uh, some cracks in the foundation, you know, fixed and we still had water. Um, I run out when it's raining in the spring and the fall to make sure we do have um, one of those drains that is put in by, I don't know who, the village or whatever, be sure the leaves aren't on there because if there's leaves there, the water doesn't go down. So <clears throat> I'm, what I'm trying to say is we still have water. Are they going to also look at those little white sewer backup valves, I think they're called? Are they going to look at those two and people who have put those in? I'm sorry about this long, but but I do think that these are some important uh, things, you know. Water master plan. Ab ab absolutely. Um, so those those white caps we we commonly refer to those as clean outs. Um, so there's there's kind of a wide variety of what could be underground there. If it's just a clean out, which is kind of a a vertical pipe coming off of your sewer pipe. Um, that uh, some people just install those as access points so that a plumber can get in there and rod the sewer line. Um, other people, there's a company that m makes a clean out that has a kind of flapper valve in there that helps prevent some sewer backup. Um, but the village also has a subsidy program that helps fund some uh, beefier projects, if you will, that, that involve a little more infrastructure. Um, you know, if you ever see a manhole, essentially a four foot diameter manhole getting installed in someone's front yard, 
Um, it's a little more substantive uh, project that involves um, kind of a dual flap system that that's a little little more substantial in provide or in protecting against sewer backflow. Um, John had mentioned earlier this this project will analyze and assess the village's current subsidy program, which helps fund those projects. Um, but again, that's only for those projects that meet the reimbursement, the subsidy program requirements. So if, if some folks just put in a clean out or just put in that one simple check valve, that wouldn't necessarily be something that was taken into account because it's not part of the village's current program. Um, your first question so Jeff, about- is he gonna is Go he, are they going to look at um, what happened in the last five or six years um, that we've had so much water? Because I think this is not just us. I notice other people, and I've talked to other people on Forest, the 300 bank, you know, and it's the same thing. They now have water in their basement too. Absolutely. And so that will be part of the plan from what John said or, or not. I, I think the indirectly, but absolutely. Um, I, I think to your point, yes, rain events over the last you know handful of years, the rain events seem to have been more intense. We're getting heavier rainfalls over shorter periods of time. Um, that is taken into account. I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, rainfall data has has been updated. The Illinois State Water Survey they they kind of establish rainfall data that is used when engineers do these sorts of studies. And that was updated just within the last, I think it was last year. Um, so that's something that would be taken into account. And, you know, further to further that, you know, part of what we're trying to do with this project is to establish, you know, what level of protection, if you will, is the village trying to establish? Do we want to make our sewers you know, capable, or I shouldn't just say our sewers, but do we want to make all of our stormwater infrastructure capable of handling a 10-year event? Do we want to make all of our infrastructure capable of handling a 100-year event? That's all part of what is going to be um, kind of one of the outcomes of this report, because there are obviously cost implications to differing levels of protection. So um, to your point, rain events over the last few years, they have been in more, more intense that should be taken into account when the updated uh, rainfall data is analyzed. Um, furthermore, as John also pointed out earlier, we're gonna be having uh, some you know, open house and, and meetings with the public and certainly more um, opportunities for feedback and, and questions and concerns. So as that all plays out, um, you know, certainly if we get pockets of town or you know, just random folks talking about sewer backup, you know, that's really where the consultant can kind of step in and say, you know, based on what we're hearing, we think we need to go in one direction or a different direction. Um, but uh, to answer those questions, yes, I think based on your concerns, that will, will all be kind of wrapped into this project. Um, to answer your first question about the railroad tracks, visually, yes, certainly very imposing. And, and from a drainage perspective, there's a lot going on there. Uh, but hydraulically, which is really how this, you know, the rainfall is all, it, it's not trying to go over land in those areas. It's not trying to cross the tracks. It's getting into the sewer and it's going where the sewer leads it. At the railroad tracks, everything south of the tracks generally flows south down to Madison Street. And then the 400 blocks generally flow north up to Lake Street. So um, even though there's a, there's, um, a, a big divide north to south along the uh, Union Pacific tracks, there's kind of a hydraulic separation there. So it, it, the tracks themselves and the, abu um, the, the abutment really don't make a big difference. Um, we certainly have issues along the CN tracks, the tracks that run north south through town. That is a little more um, of an issue because that's not as affected by infrastructure. That's generally some kind of low spots in backyards where backyards just don't have anywhere to drain because of the big uh, berm there. So that's certainly something that we would have the, the consultant take a look at. I don't know offhand what the solution is or if there is a magic solution to address that. Um, there's a lot of private property abutting a lot of private property that the railroad owns and, and we've got a big you know berm there, but um, certainly would be something that would be uh, assessed as part of this program to see if there is a solution that we can implement to help address some of that. 
Thank you, Jeff. I had one more question, if that's okay, and then I'll uh, I'll, I'll back away. Um, what what are you going to be looking at the impact of the deep tunnel? Because it seemed like once the deep tunnel was finished up, that's when the water started to come. Now I don't know if they bat, if they you know they close they close sewage off. And then, you know, when there's too much water and then it doesn't have anywhere to go. So it comes either in our backyards or through the sewage. So will that be something that the this evaluation will also look at of the impact of the deep tunnel? Yeah, we, I mean, we can certainly talk to the uh, consultant about that. Um, when the deep tunnel reaches capacity, so it's a great question. And to give a little more background there, um, the Village of River Forest kind of has you know, a few different, we'll call them watersheds. So some sewers go north, some sewers go south, and then everything kind of cuts west towards the river generally and connects to the MWRD's deep tunnel system. Um, so we've kind of got, uh, I'll say maybe four or five connections with the MWRD and which ultimately leads to their deep tunnel system. When they reach capacity, they, they overflow into the river uh, it's called a combined sewer overflow. It happens a few times a year when we get these really heavy rain events, more so lately than than previously. Excuse me. Um, so it does happen, but there is a relief a relief valve there, if you will, because they just kind of dump it out into the river. Um, certainly unpleasant, but it's not that it's not a situation where we just hit a brick wall and everything continues to back up. There is still some flow there, um, but it's a, it's a fair question and certainly something that uh, we can have the consultant look into as, as much as possible. I mean, obviously there's a different governmental agency there, uh, but we can certainly get as much information as we can out of them to see if there's something we need to do to help accommodate those types of situations. Thank you both. Appreciate it. Sure. And, and there's, there's two main problems though, and they're distinctly separate. One is groundwater getting into your basement and cracks in your foundation that really you can't do that much about. And the other is the stormwater because it's a combined stormwater sewer system, which they separated now up north for part of it, but the rest of the village is still all combined. And so all that water eventually ends up in the deep tunnel, which it still isn't finished. There's still projects to contain the water that aren't going to be done for another five to 10 years, right? There's some quarry that they dump all the water in. So if you have cracks in your basement and it rains really hard, no matter what we do, that's not gonna help it, right? You have to divert the water away from your house. You have to fix the cracks in your basement. And this is really to make sure you don't get like sewage or you divert all that water that's in the sewers and gets it away from your house so it can't back up, right? That's the main impetus of this project. Correct. Um, I, I think that's a fair assessment. But to be to be honest, if if you know we go through this exercise and we get a massive amount of residents that say, you know, I'm not worried about sewer backflow. I've participated in the subsidy program and and that's been addressed. You know, everybody. You know, if everybody just has concerns about uh, groundwater coming through cracks in the foundation, maybe a separate subsidy program comes out of that to help address groundwater. Um, so it's not that that isn't part of the equation. It's still part of the discussion. Um, but yes, it's a, it's a completely separate beast at that point and isn't the main focus of this project. Got it. Oh, Margie, yeah. go ahead. Margie, you're, you're muted. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I had asked earlier about uh, detention. Will detention codes residential be included in this? Also grading, um, will you be looking at that, whether residential, commercial? I don't know if there's a difference in codes between those. Also likelihoods and probabilities, will they be attached to, for example, the 50 or 100 year flood and events that come out of that? Um, and then lastly, I. I was requesting someone other than Christopher Burke evaluate the dumping of the Greenfield Northside sewer project at Greenfield into the river north upstream from the residents on the west side. So I know that's quite a few things I threw in there at once. I'll do my best. Let me know if I forget anything. Um, the, the first question uh, about ordinances and, and um, 
grading and things like that in detention. Absolutely, that's part of the scope that we've already built into the RFP. Um, something that staff has kind of been looking at for a little while now, to be honest with you, just to make sure that development projects are adhering to an appropriate level of um, kind of scrutiny and, and stormwater detention for lack of another term. Um, independent of this project. So certainly at this point, that, that hasn't happened in, in the last few years. So uh, it is certainly our intent to include grading or uh, ordinance kind of analysis into this project as well. Um, you're, forgive me, I've, I've kind of lost my train of thought. Give me, give me your next question again, if you would. Um. So ordinance, you're going to consider ordinances for det stormwater detention and grading. Is that correct? Is that what you just said? Uh, certainly for detention. I mean, for grading, um, I don't know that we've identified that as a particular. We kind of just in the RFP, we talked about ordinance um, analysis and, and changes that are needed. So we would certainly include our grading ordinance in that discussion with the consultants. Uh, that wasn't something we had previously discussed. Uh, is there a particular concern about grading that you have based on our current ordinance? No, just if people are regrading and the water flows differently to impact either adjacent properties or the public right of way. Uh, yeah, fair question. Um, you know, our, the way our current ordinance is set up, which was adopted, I believe, back in late 2012, you're not technically allowed to create any quote unquote adverse impact to an adjacent property or the public right of way. That would still be the case. Um, I don't know, again, certainly something we would discuss with the consultant. I don't know that there's a lot to change there to make more specific. Um, my bigger concern would be the detention element because regardless of how you grade, if you're holding onto more water on your property, um, the holding of the water is is going to make a much bigger impact than subtle nuances in grading here or there beyond what we're currently requiring. So um, to, to make my long answer a little bit longer, yes, we would certainly include all those ordinances with our with, you know, our package to the consultant for them to analyze. Um, but I think the heavier look would be taken at the, um, the detention side of things uh, more so than the grading part. Okay. Um the ordinance, doesn't it allow, don't, don't they have to submit something to the village if they're going to do some regrading on your own property? And you, you yes. Guys look yes, yes. Uh, and our website lists a whole bunch of things, but I mean, technically any patio, any regrading, um, any addition, certainly new construction, all those things require a grading plan uh, with topography. There are certain circumstances where we waive the requirement of a grading plan with topography. If somebody's putting in a, you know, a 50 foot square foot uh, shed, we're not going to require grading for that. A small patio um, in the middle of the property that doesn't look like it's going to impact a neighboring property in any way, we won't require a grading plan for that. But for um, larger, more substantial projects, we certainly require grading plans and staff reviews them to make reviews them to make sure that they're not going to create adverse impacts to adjacent properties. So has the village considered evaluating with someone other than Christopher Burke, the discharge at Greenfield? Uh, uh, John, you can chime in on that if you want to, to my knowledge, no, I don't believe any separate assessment has been made of that other than the Burke um, modeling at the onset of that NSMP project. Um, I, that's, I'm not quite sure how that plugs into this project or how we would plug that into that project, um, but certainly it something we can discuss. It figures into uh, river flooding, especially for people, residents downstream and uh, public property downstream. Sure. But but I, I, I can bring it up I'm again sorry. through the process, but I, I think what the, the analysis kind of indicated at the time, um, based on when a, when a river crests, um, the idea was that the water that goes into the river as part of the NSMP project is getting into the water, the time of concentration, which is the time it takes from when the water hits the ground to it getting to where it needs to go, which in this case would be the river. The time of concentration up there uh, with, the, with the project in place is pretty quick. We've got a sewer, we've got a very efficient um, conveyance system to get the water into the river. 
it usually takes a while for that river to to increase in, in height and, and what we call crest, which is when we see problems and we have to block off Chicago Avenue and, and part of Lake Street sometimes. Um, so the, the Burke model, um, I know that was part of the discussion at the time, it was that that really shouldn't lead to any increased flooding because that water is in the river and downstream prior to when we would see it crest and, and cause problems. That's not to say we're not gonna see problems, that's just to say that that water getting in from the NSMP project um, is not um, is, is theoretically not really impacting that crest. Yeah, and the, the only thing I would add to that is, you know, this this um, engineering analysis through the stormwater master plan, they can certainly look at any data that we have after the uh, NSMP is put in place, you know, and and then take a look at it and see if anything has happened, but. Um, as, as Jeff said, that water has come and gone basically by the time the river rises to a point where it impacts the village. Christopher Burke did a lot of um, modeling back in, after the 2008 flood. Uh, there was a task force on the sewer and the berm that Frank Paris commissioned. Um, I don't know if you all have those. I had brought that up earlier and I don't know if Jeff was here at that time. Um, but anyway, that was done before you did the north side sewer. So those records are around. Um, and maybe if you don't have them, the task force might. Yeah, certainly any information and all information that we have related to flooding um, or, or models or studies that were done uh, at any point in the, in the recent past would be shared with this consultant. Um, the, only, the only caveat I would throw out there is that, um, as I mentioned before, with rainfall data having changed, those models become somewhat, I don't wanna say obsolete, but um, they, they would need to be updated. So at a certain point, um, you know, it may be more efficient just to start from scratch to include updated rainfall data to accommodate climate change to, you know, and again, starting from scratch, now we've got the NSMP at least phase one in the ground. So that wasn't included as the model. That was all theoretical at the time. So um, certainly we would share any and all information we have with this consultant to make sure that we're um, kind of being as efficient as possible. Thank you. Sure. Ms. Cascatalo, you look like you had a question before. Yeah, I do. I have a couple. First, thanks, okay. John and Jeff. I appreciate it you taking the time tonight. I know you've done this once already and I couldn't attend that meeting because I was at a school board meeting. So I really appreciate you that you've done this. Um, I have a couple of thoughts. One is, is there a possibility of um, introducing an equity component to the RFP? Uh, something that might encourage uh, at a minimum minority owned businesses to apply? Um, or at least provide some language that indicates that we're welcoming to that. I know it's a village priority to our board and to the village president. Um, so I'd love to see some language that, that indicates that. We've done that with our recent police and fire hires. And I think that that has, has uh, that looked good for the village. It's attracted some people that might not have attracted before. Um, and I'd love to see that as part of um, what we're looking for. Uh, in terms of the consultant that was brought on board? Yes, in terms okay. in terms of what we're who, of, of in our ask for the RFP for consultants um, that we encourage minority owned businesses that we're um, welcoming and anxious to work with them um, so that we'd love to see that kind of proposal hit our desk. Um, I recognize like doesn't take away from the other necessary qualifications in any way. Um, sure. Just, just to add that. So that's one thing. Another thing is I live at 8125 Lake, um, which is in the high risk, low accessibility area. Frankly, I'm surprised we're not a floodplain at this point. I expect sometime in the future we will be. Um, so whenever we have these heavy rainfall events, we see people in our 36 home townhomes between Edgewood and the river, and then as well as River Oaks and Auvergne, um, starting to get out their sump pumps and get out their hoses and divert water from their basements. So I know that anybody who hasn't remediated in our area is experiencing flooding during, basement flooding during that time. Um, primarily sewage backups, but the, the water that's coming up at Chicago happens to come east of where we live. We're on Lake, just 
a few blocks south of Chicago. So when we close at Thatcher, we're all west of that. Um, and I would love to see in this uh, request for proposals, something really looking at things that are west of Thatcher, things that are, that are close to the river the way we are, um, particularly th this area of lake west of Edgewood and Avern and River Oaks. Um, I know that the berm was put there. We, we experienced significant damage in 2008, as did everybody in this area. You could kayak down Lake Street. I wasn't here at this time, but Margie's mentioned that there are um, documenta there's documentation, there were studies done. Um, I don't think it's irrelevant because I don't think the rainfall has gotten less during this period of time. So I, I expect that a future effect might be worse rather than um, better. And I'm not sure that you hear a lot from my neighbors about flooding because we're kind of used to it. Um, our yards flood all the time, but we're a lot more concerned about our basements. Um, and we have, we have some neighbors who have had the opportunity to uh, participate in the program that the village is, is working with to remediate flooding and some who have not. Um, so I think that looking, reading through the, the documentation that, there, that we have so far, there is an indication that we don't have impact from the Des Plaines River west of, um, that, that's a, our western boundary. Um, and it indicated that that wasn't a significant source of flooding for us. But I think that in my neighbor's experience and in my experience, that's not the case. We often see the river reach right up to the base of the, the bridge on Lake. We watch very carefully. We all have flood alerts on our phones um, because we, we're aware that that could come over very easily. It's a, it's a difference of two feet maybe. Um, so that'll come right down Lake and into our homes. If, if that's the case. So when we're doing this, I, I would like to just make sure that we're not saying that the Des Plaines River isn't a factor here. It definitely is for this area. And I'd like this area to be specifically considered anything that's west of Thatcher really, um, where we see that the river can come up Chicago all the way to Thatcher or further if, if necessary, um, that, that we're really considering that as an element that we want studied specifically within this proposal. Fair enough, we can certainly include that. Thank you. One, one very minor point is when I looked a couple months ago at the website about the subsidy program, you actually don't mention the ultimate maximum amount that you will subsidize. I think it said something about like up to six or whatever the number is. And then some additional by case, case by case, you may encourage people more if you were brought that out a little bit more. Some people don't even know about the subsidy program. We use it and it's been very helpful. Thanks. Good. Fair enough, thank you. Well, we didn't use it. We weren't sure, and I'm not sure why we didn't, but can I ask, because Megan mentioned about the uh, Des Plaines River, um, what do we know that uh, Maywood and River Grove is doing? Because I've been up, um, what's the name of the um, uh, road there, um, near River Road, you know, where you go up towards the- um, Are you talking uh, on First Avenue? Uh, Are you on the west side or the I east side know. of the river? I don't know. It's the, it's on the west side of the river. Okay, and I know, going that. Yeah, if you keep going up there, and I've been up there where the road has been closed because there's been all this flooding from the Des Plaines, and not only you know it it goes through all the trees and whatever, but then it goes also to the Des Plaines. So, as Megan talks about how the Des Plaines is really a is problematic. It's probably more problematic further north. I mean, I've, I, I don't know if Maywood has flooding, um, but I was wondering if we know anything about their issues and should we think about that or not? Because I'm sure that they have flooding. There's lots and lots of housing on the other side. I think it's called River Road. Um, and I don't know if they have flooding or not. Um, I was just wondering, I don't think 
you know, in terms of the amount of money that that would cost. But I was just wondering if we knew anything about what's going on there. I think it's a little different um, all up and down the river. And quite frankly, it all depends on how high the banks happen to be in a particular area. Um, river Forest is fortunate if, if you, you know, if you're familiar with kind of North Avenue and Thatcher, that area, the east side of the river, the river banks over there where the uh, NSMP project kind of spits out into the river, our banks are pretty tall there. Um, that offers a lot of protection for us. So, um, you know, normally I think the normal water level for the river is about four feet. We don't see, we don't really see trouble at Chicago Avenue and Lake Street till we start to get up around 16 feet or so um, in that general area. So we've got a lot of uh, what's called bounce before we have to start to enact our, our flood response and, and start protecting the village. Other towns just aren't so lucky. Some some places only have you know half of that in terms of a riverbank. Sometimes they um, the river comes up six feet and they're you know starting to see water on roads and things like that. So um, that's upstream. Uh, you could run into that uh, half a mile downstream too. It, it just all depends on how areas were developed or if they were developed close to the river and what that uh, meant for the particular riverbank in a in a in a given area. It, it's all. Uh, it's all a bit arbitrary, but we're, we're very fortunate in that case because River Forest has some pretty tall river banks on our side. Well, I was here in 1987 when uh, the Des Plaines did go over, went through the forest preserve onto Thatcher and the 300 block. And you probably weren't here, Jeff and John, where there was so much water, maybe it was one of those 50 year floods or whatever. and. Uh, I don't know, Lake Street and all the houses on Edgemere and whatever, they had some really, you know, uh, flooding. And I still remember that now. That's how many years ago, over 30 sure. years. And, for and what I don't know worth, if any of what's been done has helped already, you know. I was gonna say, I mean, we've certainly refined our flood response over the years, John and I, I was hired here in 2013 and John shortly thereafter. Um, you know, we've, since 2013, uh, I know we had an event, I think it was April of 13, where we had a lot of water on Lake Street, right um, right by River Oaks and Auburn and Edgewood and that. Um, but other than that event, and that was more of a sewer, there are a lot of nuances to each of these events, but um, you know, we've, we've refined our sewer or our flood response and, and we've got berms in place. We, we've got our response at Chicago Avenue down to a T. Um, we're currently working on some uh, projects to kind of, it, increase our level of protection along Lake Street there, uh, where we're talking by the bridge and, and we're looking at a potential project to help help things out over there. Um, but our, our flood response has has definitely increased over the years and has, has certainly helped to prevent that overland flooding from increasing those houses like you saw back in the 80s. Um, that's that's kind of one of our goals that, that we've tried to address over the years. And I think we've come a long way, but um, certainly more we could be doing, which is part of the reason we're doing this project. Um, I had a question. This is uh, John Binder here. Um, I don't see any discussion in terms of the uh, proposed scope of services regarding um, phase two of the north side project. I mean, is it set that phase two will begin shortly? Uh, that project, yeah, that project is designed right now, but um, it, that's something that's going to be analyzed through the throughout this uh, stormwater master plan project. It's something that they're going to look at and determine if it's something that they would recommend and then whether that would be a high priority item for a capital improvement project or a lower priority item. Um, before we would plan on doing that, we want to make sure it gets analyzed. So the, the short answer is yes, it'll be analyzed. And if it's recommended, we can plug it into our capital improvement plan. Um, just as a reminder, there was a village board meeting a few years ago on the subject and the board, the board did vote to do phase two. So it's the only question mark was how was it to be funded? So uh, I'm not sure if you, if you guys, John and Jeff were both around at the time, but um, I mean, it sounds like it's been decided per se. I think everybody would love to do it, but it also comes with a price tag of about uh, seven or eight million dollars at this point. So we've kind of kicked around a couple of ideas of, you know, maybe splitting it up into multiple streets or doing it all at once. But at the end of the day, um, my recollection of, of kind of the high level conversations was um, 
you know, we've got phase one in the ground and that was at the tune of, you know, I think $15 million or so when all was said and done. Um, let's kind of, let's see what impact that makes because even though those phase two homes didn't have any new sewers put in front of them, um, there are certainly indirect impacts uh, and benefits of the phase one work having occurred. And so let's, let's see what that first phase of the project did for all of the homes in phase one and two. And then if there's a need, certainly we can uh, attack that again on a street by street basis or all at once or however uh, we so choose. But um, to date, since phase one has, has taken place, we really haven't seen a lot of, um, we haven't seen a lot of issues up in that phase two area even. Uh, so to John's point, that would certainly be something that we would include in this study. And if the consultants felt that, yes, this is worth the village's money to, you know, to do this project in among all these other capital improvement projects that they would hopefully identify, that's, that's something we could plug into the, um, the capital improvement plan, but, but that would have to be, you know, that would have to be reviewed under the context of any other projects that they identify through this project as well. Well, it, I think it would certainly be worthwhile to go back and check the minutes from that board meeting because um, and I think I was even at the board meeting as were, as were several other residents and that it was explicit. We will be doing phase two. It's just a question of where the money comes from. So that seems to cast things in a much different light. Certainly, we can, we can certainly talk about that at, 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 at the staff level. Okay. Go ahead, Margie. Um, you, for a while, you had an inflatable barrier on Chicago Avenue at Thatcher. Do you still use that for flood? Or did you replace it? Because I didn't see it the last time. Well, we, we have a combination of barriers. We have a concrete wall, and we also have a barrier that rolls out, and it rises with the river level. So it looks like an inflatable barrier, but it's actually the water going into it and rising okay. with it. So it's kind of a double protection there. And back to something Jeff said a couple of minutes ago before John Binder um, about the Lake Street Bridge project that you might be doing something there. Um, I, we, I haven't heard anything about that. If you can elaborate. Still, certainly, we're still, it, it's still kind of in a conceptual stage and, and we're talking to consultants about trying to um, do a little design work. But one of the things that we're potentially budgeting for next year, and, and we're currently in the process of our, our budget season. So, uh, you know, I, I can't, I certainly can't guarantee any of this, but um, one of the projects that we're currently analyzing is uh, basically an extension of the current berm. That berm, as it kind of curls out towards Lake Street, um, it runs maybe 25, 50 feet a little west and then just kind of dies off, but doesn't really continue to the bridge very far. Um, in past years, one of our flood response items has been to kind of temporarily extend that berm with stone because that's a low point. So one of the projects that we're looking at here is to um, kind of create a more permanent berm extension, if you will, a little bit closer to the bridge so that we don't have to year after year go add stone there when the river or if the river starts to creep up. Um, it's kind of just there already. So that's something we're currently trying to work out with is Cook County Forest Preserve. So there are, you know, property issues there and permits and um, MWRD plays a role. So there's there's still a whole lot of um, boxes to check, but that's one of the projects that we're currently looking at. Anybody else? This is Patty. I don't know if you guys saw that there's a mess, there's a question in the chat. Oh, okay, let me see here. I can tell you, it just says is the specific, oh, I the specific see it sewer systems or does it include flooded yards? Okay, yeah, so that, yeah, that question was um, addressed. So that will include uh, sewer systems and flooded yards, flooded yards. Uh, would include a review of any ordinances that need to be changed or addressed. Um, and then the sewer system, obviously they'll look at, at our sewer system and any impacts there. So both are included.
So if there's uh, no other questions, uh, thanks for, for joining us. And you can always reach us uh, anytime. You can give us a call, an email. We're, we're here, rain or shine. So uh, yeah, and uh, if there's nothing else, uh, just have a good evening. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Yep. You're welcome.